In the fall of 1896, white teenagers in Annapolis, Maryland, were first offered an opportunity to continue education for free with the opening of Annapolis High School. AHS consisted of three grades, 8th, 9th, and 10th. The high school was attached to the existing primary schoolhouse on Green Street in downtown Annapolis. Prior to this, education in Annapolis beyond 7th grade was available only through private schools at a cost. During this time, law directed an establishment of schools for colored children to be maintained only by taxes paid by colored people in the county. This funding arrangement resulted in a separate and vastly inferior school system for these children because the tax base from their segment of the population was insufficient to support the cost of buildings, supplies, and teacher salaries. The idea of a high school for these students was not even considered. It was not until 1917 that a high school division was offered to black children in Annapolis. From 1866 to 1932, the Stanton School was the sole public education facility for the city's black children. Located on Washington Street in the heart of Ward 4's thriving African-American neighborhood of businesses and homes. The Stanton School has a long and rich history of its own. During this time, the Stanton School struggled to operate due to lack of public tax contribution. In 1910, Anne Arundel County did not have a school attendance law. Annapolis High's student body was primarily females. To attract new students, the school branched out from only offering a college preparatory program. Many young people wanted skills that would allow them to advance in the business world. Addressing their needs, courses were added in banking, bookkeeping, and clerical skills such as sonography. Typewriters and duplicating machines were purchased to keep the program current with the latest innovations. In addition, popular extracurricular activities help maintain student interest in the school, including a school newspaper called the Red and Blue, a literary society club, and a drama club. The most popular club was the Junior Red Cross because it allowed students to contribute in a positive way while the country was at war. The addition of a football team also catapulted male enrollment. In the decade before the outbreak of World War I, 73 different boys played football for the school. By 1918, 57 of those boys who played football were now part of the United States military, answering the nation's call to arms during World War I. This was the start of a long connection of Annapolis High students and the U.S. military, many becoming highly decorated for bravery during their service. Annapolis High's most persistent problem in its first decade was securing steady leadership. Salary disputes and agreeing with the trustees about the direction of the school were at the heart of the trouble in finding a dedicated long-term principal. Thus, in the school's first 10 years of existence, AHS had said hello and goodbye to seven principals. Consistency at the helm was finally achieved with Principal Louise Linthicum. She is believed to be the first female high school principal in the state, and she held the position for 18 years. Tremendous growth and improvement occurred under her leadership. In the 60 years to follow, AHS had only four principals. Enrollment skyrocketed beyond what early planners of AHS envisioned. Annapolis High was appealing to families living outside the city whose children were largely required to attend inferior schools in their home districts. Many out-of-area students came from Davidsonville, Germantown, Brooklyn, and the eastern shore of the Severn River. A resolution was made to ensure Annapolis children had first claim to seats in the school. In addition, to make more room, students were suspended if they had five absences in any term. In 1908, the newly completed three-story Annapolis High opened its doors. The building is currently home to Annapolis Elementary School. Annapolis now boasted the most modern high school building in the state of Maryland. 
In the fall of 1922, two new Anne Arundel County public high schools would open, joining Annapolis High and Stanton School. Glen Burnie High School served the northern part of the county. Previously, these children rode by train north to Baltimore or south to Annapolis to attend school. Tracy's Landing High School, later renamed Southern High School in 1933, served students who previously took the long trip north to Annapolis or west to Washington, D.C. The county's fourth public high school was Arundel. Although Arundel High School traces its roots as far back as 1908 as a privately funded agricultural school, it was not run as a public high school until 1924. Meanwhile, the congested hallways and crowded classrooms led to an increased number of disciplinary problems. Rumors arose that the principal and the teachers had no control over the students. One grammar school student was afraid to go to high school the following year because from her seat next door, she saw high school students hanging out of the windows, calling to friends and throwing marbles at passersby below. The freshmen at AHS also had to suffer through hazing from the upperclassmen. In 1922, the superintendent decided none of the senior boys would receive their diplomas due to an atrocious incident. In an act of solidarity, the female students demanded the boys get their diplomas. The, prin the principal compromised and allowed the boys to pick up their diplomas 10 days after the girls received theirs at the graduation ceremony. Between 1929 and 1945, the U.S. suffered through the Great Depression and dispatched millions of troops to fight in the Second World War. The era's economic and wartime hardships affected most citizens of Annapolis. Money was scarce, jobs vanished, and lives were lost. AHS was not immune to these problems, especially after a fire destroyed the third floor of the school in 1930. This led to the construction of a third AHS building near Spa Creek, now Maryland Hall. This opened in 1932. At the same time, a long overdue new high school building opened to serve Anne Arundel County's colored students. Wiley H. Bates High School was just a half mile from AHS on Smithville Road. Again, global conflict had a great impact on the students of AHS in the form of World War II. The possibility of invasion was a very real threat to people living along the Atlantic coast and Chesapeake Bay. Students formed rescue and firefighting squads. In place of assemblies, first aid classes were held. Air raid drills were practiced regularly and a school blackout plan was developed. At least 42 confirmed AHS graduates suffered deaths while serving during the war. Overcrowding continued to be an issue after the war into the 1940s. The Board of Education decided to move from a grammar school and high school model into a three-tier system. Elementary, K through six, junior high, seventh through ninth, and high school, 10th through 12th. Annapolis Junior High started out in the old H High School building on Green Street, while the senior high school remained in the building that is now Maryland Hall. The junior high model was phased out in 1989 in favor of a middle school, 6th through 8th. The fact that there was once an Annapolis junior high as well as an Annapolis senior high is why some older Annapolitans simply call our school senior high. And the signage on the front of the school still reads Annapolis senior high. In 1945, a slow return to normalcy occurred as student activities that had vanished during the war were reestablished. There was one representative from each homeroom that formed a student court. They deliberated cases of students roaming the halls, cutting in the food line, skipping steps, shouting, and smoking in the lavatories. The orchestra, glee club, and yearbook again swung into action. In 1947, a bi-weekly activity period was inserted into the school day to give students a selection of 32 hobbies to participate in. Athletic teams also resumed and are credited with bringing out pride in the student body. Early on, AHS Athletics competed under various nicknames, including Red Jackets, Red and Blue, the Scarlet Cyclone, and the Maroon Tornado. 
while always wearing jerseys of a dark reddish hue with varying shades of blue trim. The 1947 student council decided the school should have an official mascot. The student body picked a shadowy animal known for its quickness, ferocity, and agility, the panther. They also voted to select permanent school colors. In recognition of the long association of AHS with various shades of red and blue, the students formally selected maroon and royal with bright white trimming as the colors for uniforms. As the calendar turned from 1949 to 1950, events taking place on the international stage again penetrated Annapolis High's walls. The Korean conflict not only took away the principal via the draft, but also scores of students, because the boys could now be drafted when they turned 18, even if they were still in school. Annapolis began an accelerated program in the fall of 1950, so boys could graduate before becoming draft eligible. Meanwhile, Bates High School was creating its own distinguished and proud legacy. The decision to put all of Anne Arundel County's money for colored secondary education into just one school resulted in Bates being transformed into the largest, most modern high school in the county. Activities at Bates were a mirror image of what the white students were doing at Annapolis High. The Bates students were very proud of their newspaper, The Chronicle, and yearbook, originally dubbed The Retrospect, and later The Beacon. The school band and a variety of singing groups attracted crowds whenever they performed. An active theater club put on several productions a year. Base athletic teams were known as the Little Giants and suited up in purple and gold uniforms. The postgraduate plans of Bates students similar to those at AHS. Annually, one third of the Bates graduates went on to college, about the same percentage as Annapolis High, although they headed in very different directions because Maryland's state colleges were as strictly segregated as its public schools. Most Bates students matriculated to historically black colleges, Morgan State, Bowie State, Maryland State, now UMES, Coppin State, Hampton, Howard, and Lincoln Universities. In theory, Brown versus the Board of Education ended segregation of schools in 1954, but Anne Arundel County was slow to comply and did not fully desegregate schools until 1966. Rhonda Pendell Charles, currently Alderwoman, Ward 3, is one of many people to confirm the conclusion that kids did not really have a problem with integration. It was adults, parents, and teachers who caused most of the problems back then, not the students. Annapolis High began the 1966 school year with about 1,200 white students and 500 black students. Ideally, African-American students wanted an opportunity to excel and to lead in ways they would have when they had their own school. At minimum, according to Rondell Pendell Charles, the black students wanted adults at AHS to care about them and encourage them in the same way their previous teachers at Bates had done. Instead, they found a much more depersonalized and at times hostile atmosphere. Blacks sensed an attitude from some administration and faculty that they were expected to be grateful for the opportunity to attend AHS. Those who engaged in athletics, however, quickly acclimated to their new surroundings. Football played a huge role in helping the difficult and overdue transition. Bill Belichick, AHS class of 1970, stated, the football field was one place where it didn't make any difference what color your skin was. You got to know each other, and sports bonded us together. On the other hand, former Bates students who had aspirations of assuming leadership roles in school government, organizations, and clubs were frustrated because there was no real opportunity of being elected to student council, to become club president, or even of making the cheerleading squad. On February 12, 1970, Several dozen black students rampaged through the school, breaking windows, tearing down posters, scattering school records, and roughing up a vice principal. 
No one was seriously injured, but the sense of chaos was heightened because the public address system was inadvertently left on, allowing the angry shouting match between students and adults in the main office to broadcast throughout the school. Four students were arrested and 41 others were suspended, along with a white English teacher accused of helping the students organize the protest and student Carl Snowden, who is a current civil rights activist in Annapolis. During the 1970s, the next two Annapolis High principals, Joseph A. Marina and Richard G. Enser, helped progress the school and worked to improve race relations. Black and white students would share leadership responsibilities. Sensitivity training was implemented for the staff and recruiting of minority teachers was a focus. All this added to the sense of community. Answer tinkered with the curriculum to ensure students many and varied needs were met. 175 separate academic, business, and vocational and enrichment courses were offered and were multi-leveled in an attempt to serve each student at their various levels of instruction. Numerous factors led to the construction and location of AHS on Riva Road. Until the mid-1960s, Annapolis High's immediate neighbors in Spyview Heights and Murray Hill were tolerant of the occasional inconveniences that came from living adjacent to the school and its playing fields. Twice a day, they had to close their ears to traffic noise from school buses and cars. Rowdy crowds after Friday night football and basketball games could also be irritating. Integration, however, seemed to bring a measure of suspicion and even fear to some of the school's neighbors. Fights sometimes erupted in parking lots after games, leading to multiple arrests and turmoil. Additionally, the layout of the school not only served as an open invitation to cut class by slipping away unnoticed between periods, but also made it particularly impossible to keep outsiders from entering the school. Fire regulations prohibited locking doors, and although teachers formed what they jokingly called the mod squad to patrol halls during their free periods, they could not cover every corridor at once. Construction of the new Annapolis High began in 1976 on 10 acre site five miles west of city limits on Riva Road. The original plan included a middle school at the site where the swim center sits today. Principal Enser liked the open setting far removed from residential areas that would presumably facilitate improved monitoring of traffic to exclude unauthorized outsiders and to make class cutting more difficult. Families living in Annapolis, especially those whose teenagers were used to walking to school, voiced concern that the distance to Riva Road from their homes would greatly increase the amount of time getting to and from school. Those without cars would now be dependent on bus transportation, and some would be unable to participate in sports because they lacked a way home after practices. Regardless of the pros and cons, the new building on Reaver Road welcomed students in January of 1979. During the 1997-98 school year, Principal Joy Smith learned that Annapolis High was approaching the 100th anniversary of its first graduating class of 1899. Centennial activities were organized to take place during homecoming weekend in the fall of 1998. The traditional parade through downtown Annapolis, which had been discontinued soon after the school moved to Riva Road, was reinstituted. About 750 graduates from both AHS and Bates joined current Annapolis High students to march from St. John's College, around Church Circle, and down Main Street to City Dock. An alumni band and alumni cheerleaders participated in the parade. A packed Enser Stadium saw the Fighting Panthers defeat Old Mill 35 to 7. Test scores had stagnated since 1995. High school dropout rate had increased. One third of all high schoolers had below a 2.0 C average. Particularly of concern was the gap between various ethnic groups. High schools switched to a four period day rather than a six period day. Various teachers, parents, and student groups voiced opposition based on the belief that 85-minute class meetings on alternate A days and B days would have a negative impact on learning. 
The International Baccalaureate Program was introduced to combat students leaving for private schools. The IB program was to consist of rigorous college preparatory courses, a step above AP classes. Annapolis High was selected as the magnet location for the south part of the county. The program began in 2003 with slots for 100 top students. Also in 2003, the size of the Annapolis High ESOL program had grown from 65 students to 112 students. Retiring guidance counselor Tony Anzalone believed the influx of non-English speakers would be the biggest challenge in the coming decade. After failing to make adequate yearly progress for four years, the 1600 student campus was added to a list of more than 50 schools needing corrective action. The decision to force the school's entire staff to reapply, including custodians and secretaries, is called zero basing and is one of the many options for local reform outlined by the state. Other options included changing the curriculum, hiring an outside expert, and extending the school year or school day. In January of 2007, Anne Arundel County's school superintendent told Annapolis High School teachers that all employees at the campus will have to reapply for their jobs. A drastic move to restructure the school after it failed to meet federal No Child Left Behind guidelines for four years straight. The announcement at Annapolis High by Superintendent Kevin M. Max Maxwell sparked anger among the teachers, surprise among the parents, and sadness in the school's principal, who said he closed his office door and sat alone for the rest of the day, trying to figure out what he could have done differently. Annapolis High has struggled with incidents of violence, low graduation rates, and failing scores among its lower income students. The school had three principals in four years, including one who filed a race discrimination lawsuit against the school system officials. Through all the turmoil of the early 2000s, Annapolis High remains a source of pride amongst its graduates. Unless you've been here as a teacher, student, or faculty member, you truly don't understand what a special place it is.